Hello everyone, it's Lafayna MTBX Steel Championship uh, in Bubei. We are 10 seconds after the start, I'm participating in the lead group, 7 laps, 4 kilometers each. And you can hear that Gita Shumska is going to allow us to start in 1 second and we are off to the start. Everyone is pushing, everyone is flying and uh, in this age group of mine, elite group, there was around 15 participants but we were more of them because uh, a few different age groups started at the same time. And you will also see on the screen some segments information. Unfortunately, organizers uh, didn't have lap times, official lap times, so I took that information from Strava and we will see at least some rough reference uh, how this uh, looked like on the race day. Here we are coming towards Bubu Ikale uh, and uh, on the left you can see a small table which indicates how fast participants were able to take that segment of the course during the race day. So there are probably some which are from different age groups and not from this uh, mass start of uh, last uh, back of the start but in general it will give you an idea how fast people were coming on the scores. In front there was Mantas Telunas from uh, top team. I tried to follow him because uh, he is definitely a powerful rider. You can see that we are finishing this uphill and my uh, time of the day was uh, 12. Uh, keep in mind that uh, during the event this data was captured some of participants were not uploaded uh, their activities to Strava yet or they made them public or they just uh, have them as private accounts so those are not included into the uh, tables so if they are keeping that information for them only they are not appearing in the leaderboards uh, online so you can see that there is already a bit of a gap, but uh, the course is uh, 4 kilometers length and we will have 7 laps, so no need to worry and uh, everything is in control at least looks like. And this was the rock garden, uh, compared to what usually are on the mountains, it was a soft one because all the stones uh, we are without any sharp edges, so that was just uh, not very fast rolling section and that kind of it. In front we can see that there was a snake uphill, a pretty steep one, and it was uh, quite difficult to go on these uh, corners, but I tried to stay on the bike for most of my tries and even if I stopped at some point I tried to just go on the bike and continue pedaling uh, because I just feel that keeping yourself on the bike uh, makes you feel better but you can see that it's definitely not faster at some point and uh, Marius Wysokowskis from uh, Valorati uh, managed to overtake me on his foot so it's not always the fastest way to go on the bike so we are already almost half of the uh, first lap at the top bar you can see progress bar of the overall race and then underneath it it's a progress for actual segment in this case lap what was very good uh, during the race day is that conditions uh, were relatively dry in compared to what we had on the Riki so that was uh, very fast rolling and in general it was uh, uncomparable at all we are coming towards the first drop of the day and uh, I had thoughts to try to take it but you can see that one participant uh, Mantas uh, went there and decided not to do that so I kind of uh, been afraid to go after him and then just had to walk off the bike because there was uh, some trees on the ground which I haven't seen before and uh, here was a technical section which on wet 
was very complex for me, but on dry it was uh, really nice uh, for handling. And Mantas de Lunas kind of a bit struggled on those uh, technical features, but whenever it started to be uphill or just a less technical area, he just fly. Yeah, so here we can see that again Mantas didn't went over the gap jump and I just uh, took that ditch on the left. It was actually very fast and I doubt whether what that was uh, any time efficient to go over that uh, jump. But anyways, uh, that was uh, only the first lap. This is very steep, 90, almost 90 degrees. Um, down and uh, you can see that on the right there was a person in red jersey it's Arturas Kazakiewicz and you can see how much time I won uh, going over that uh, section in the ditch so that was definitely worth it here the pedal unclipped and I didn't manage to get into the left as our uh, spectators were told to do so that was uh, casual way on my foot at the steep uphill and here you will see first lap time of mine and uh, normally most of the participants managed to uh, took the first lap the fastest because everyone was uh, pushing as hell in the first lap and uh, most of them had slower lap times uh, further down the road uh, on the course so here we are going, actually not we, I'm alone <laughs> and uh, everyone else is somewhere else and I'm just trying to keep up uh, on this uphill and the reason why I added this segment again is that on the first lap I made it in uh, 1 minute 41 seconds and here uh, then I don't have anyone in front to chase and just uh, going on that my own base at almost 180 ppm you will see that uh, my time significantly changed so uh, 14 seconds on such uh, short distance is actually quite a lot and probably at some point uh, you guessed it uh, why I have a camera in this particular area of my handlebar and not in the chesty. Well, I might uh, tell you more about this a bit uh, later on this uh, video, but you can see that uh, whenever it requires more power, uh, Arturas and Mantas easily uh, overtook me and just went through without waiting uh, for me, so yeah. The course had uh, sections where we can decide whether to go on one or the other area. So some are longer in distance but uh, less steeper, etc. So it was always uh, your decision to make where you try to go. And uh, sometimes you go one way and decide that, well, maybe you should go the other one. And on the next lap you try the other one and you understand that all right so maybe the first option wasn't that bad in general uh, the heart rate of the day was uh, really high for me it was almost around uh, 180 for whole course so that was always intense but usually um, when the race has something like four or five or in this case seven laps it's only on third or fourth I start to um, feel the body uh, better and it just uh, feels better to race and here I decided to take that jump and you can see that it had the cost of 185 ppm which means that uh, my stress levels increases when I'm doing those type of jumps. 
but well, that was a good feeling uh, to try it and to successfully land it. Because on the recce I, I didn't try it. Uh, probably I was a bit of afraid and conditions were uh, not dry, so that was the case. And here you can see the footage from uh, Dominikas Loda, so thanks for him for sharing it with me. So I doubt that I will take that gap jump, but uh, with so much spectators around it just uh, gave additional motivation to try it. And here was the situation that uh, I slipped on the roots. Uh, you can see the le on the left there was a metal bar. I hit it and I almost went over that bridge down. And here I didn't manage to clip the pedals and had to go on the right, which in fact uh, was the area where on the first lap Arturas lost a lot of time. So this time um, myself I'm losing time here going around that uh, harder section, but it was uh, very slow. So yeah, uh, the reason why the camera is on the handlebars is because uh, UCI, UCI uh, regulations do not allow to put it anywhere on your body. So that was uh, kind of reasonable and expected, but what was not reasonable is that organizers didn't want to allow me to put it on the handlebars. And after quite a long discussion and uh, proving that it can fit and the number can be seen, uh, without any obscuring they finally allowed me to put it on the handlebars but the reason why they wanted not to is because they said that uh, regulations allow to put the camera only on the saddle or rails or, or anywhere on the bike uh, on the saddle uh, area so however I checked the regulations I checked the rules and there is no word said that it's only available uh, to be placed there so yeah it would be very nice if uh, someone in the authority would know the rules uh, exactly as they are and not just uh, something out of their minds or similarly but well uh, that's great that they allowed me to at least place the camera here so thanks for them and thanks for that opportunity so we can just uh, have a look how the course looks like and you can see that on the third lap it's a lot more comfy to go over those uh, bump track uh, mounts and uh, yeah so as I mentioned whenever the course gets more into the second part of the race and uh, if overall health condition is good I usually feel better on the second part of the race and you can see that on the left there was a loop around this uphill because it's actually quite steep one uh, but uh, on the second and third lap I just tried this and uh, managed to go on it and what's good that uh, you can uh, maybe not in this part but on the second lap uh, whenever I went this and I noticed that it helps to uh, shorter the distance in front of our rider so that just gives you a bit of more motivation uh, to go on that harder part and you can see that my time of this uphill was 6 of the day so that was really worth the struggle going up there and here is uh, the same snake uphill which I already mentioned uh, on the first lap and uh, even though in some parts it's uh, very slow especially on the upcoming corner I was really slow there but uh, I managed to continue myself keeping myself on the bike and here was some spectators So yeah, because someone overtook me on the first lap on their feet on this uphill, it was uh, devastating. 
to go there, but well, you do what you can. And here was yet another area where we have to uh, try either one or the other way, and I, this time I decided to maybe try the steeper uphill and try to catch uh, Mantas and uh, other guy from uh, Chain Gang, but uh, here the situation happened for me on the third lap. Initially I thought that uh, the rim uh, broke once I hit that tree on the ground, but we will see it in the slow motion and I watched it quite a few times and now I have a different opinion. So basically uh, my takeoff uh, from the tree might be not the best one, I should have taken a bit more to the left, but you can see that once I hit the ground the front wheel started wobbling and I'm already going off the bike before that hit uh, to the tree. So at the contact time the rim cracked, probably uh, air went off uh, the rim immediately and then it just started wobbling and just pushed me towards that tree and well the rim didn't survive but thankfully I did uh, without any major injuries so here Antanas Gerzulis passes me by and here our guy so yeah that was it and I had to take my first did not finished of the season. So that's how Bubeik CO looked like. It was really nice course, uh, not that uh, nice finish, but things happened and uh, I had to walk the bike for uh, six or seven minutes after that crash. And that was it for, for me. So looking forward to see what the manufacturer will tell me about the rims. For those who were very concerned about uh, my expenses, uh, due to this crash, I can ensure you that expenses are the least uh, important thing once you survive uh, in a single piece such crash, so you should check your premises. And other than that, it was not Chinese carbon, it was Duke's uh, rims, and we'll see uh, how it continue from that point. Thanks for your time, and... Uh, we will see in other races for sure. Cheers. Personalo darbuotojas, tai aš be komentarų. Taip prasme, nei ar tu ten lūžai, ar tu nelūžai, stovi ant kalno savo ir pokį. Tai toks... Tai ką mis ten stovi tada įdomu? Ne, ne, atrakim. Atrakim. Visiškai be komalto. Tai bet tai buvo ten nemai. Yeah, that was a